Welcome everybody. I want to give you a brief overview of how to access the route switch racks at proctorlabs.com. So if you're coming to us and you're going to start using these route switch racks that we've developed, the first thing you're really going to want to see, you know, outside of the, the whole workbook is, is what does the topology look like from Proctor Labs perspective? So if you navigate yourself to proctorlabs.com and kind of end up where I am right here, what you're seeing on your screen, what I want to show you is that we can click on VRAC details up here at the top. If we scroll down to the very, very bottom, we can look at the CCIE routing and switching VRACs. Now, if you click on this, you're going to be able to come down here and take a look at the route switch topology. So we click on that button, and what it's going to do is it's going to bring up this diagram for us to look at that gives us a holistic view of the entire routing and switching topology that's available to you through ProctorLabs.com. So, I mean, it's just an overwhelming number of devices when you first glance at it. Now, each section in the workbook is really going to concentrate on a subset of these routers and these switches. So, this just gives you a view of everything that's available to you. So, if you want to hop on there and even come up with your own, you know, little topologies and, and, and personalized labs, you can do that using this, this specific topology that we've given to you at ProctorLabs.com. Now, the, the whole goal of this video is not to show you and brag about our racks, though. It's to come in and show you how to properly access these devices. So I want to navigate back over here to the home page at ProctorLabs.com. Now what I have is a student account that I'm going to be using to access the route switch topology that I've got available to me currently uh, as an available session. So what I want to do is I'm going to log in as my student ID. So I'm going to type in, you know, whatever your ProctorLabs.com account is. So I'm going to type that in. I'm going to also post in the, paste in the password and we'll go into our accounts. This should be the first page that you see once you log in. Now if you have a current session available to you, you should see go to current VRAC session. If this is not showing up, then you do not have a session currently in place. If you believe that this is an error and that you should, uh, you know, by all means, contact support at ipexpert.com. Uh, they should be able to help you guys out. Now, when we want to access our specific rack, whatever rack we have at this, this, this immediate time, we're going to go ahead and click on this, go to current VRAC session. So when we get this, we're going to have to accept kind of this, this EULA, and we'll just click agree to, to move past that. The next screen should, let's zoom out a little here, there you go. So this next screen uh, basically tells us what pod we're on. So this one we can see that we are on pod uh, 1059. We can see our start time, our end time, our username, how much time we have remaining within this rack session. But the important part is if you guys don't have the older Cisco VPN client, if you've never accessed proctorlabs.com before, uh, or if this is your first time on the actual route switch racks, we need to go ahead and show our VPN instructions. So if we click that and now we scroll down, we can see that there's some different uh, profiles that we have to load depending on what track we're running in. Since this is route switch, we're going to have uh, a unique profile for us that we have to create. So I'm going to go ahead and open up uh, my, my older Cisco VPN client. If you guys don't have this, this is something you're going to need to go out to cisco.com and actually download and get. You, you do have to be registered with an active CCO account to get it, but what we can do is just go to the download. If you navigate to the download software section of cisco.com and you click, uh, most of the time it's going to be on like my download history, but if you click on most popular, the one you're going to want is right here, the Cisco VPN client. If you guys can't see that, let me zoom in a little bit. It's a Cisco VPN client 5.x. So if you click on that, again, you need a valid CCO account to download. Uh, you can get the 64-bit version. If you have a 32-bit operating system, there's also some 32-bit uh, varieties that you can go out here and download from cisco.com. Again, though, that's all going to be on that most popular tab when you first go out there. So we need to set up our profile. So I'm going to go ahead and bring up my VPN client. Again, it's the older traditional Cisco IPsec VPN client. What I want to do is create a new profile. So I'm going to click on new. <clears throat> now what I do is I, I kind of line these windows up here and we're just going to give it some name. We can call this, you know, IP expert and we can say route switch. Uh, no description, but for host, the very first host we want to type in and we can just copy and paste this out of here. You can type it in whatever you want to do. It's just going to be vpn.proctorlabs.com. 
We're going to go down here and do our group authentication and we're going to put in our group name and our pre-shared key. So our group name is RS Pod Group and our password is RS Labs underscore rental. So RS Labs underscore rental. And we're going to also go to backup servers because we do have a backup VPN gateway in case that primary one's down for some reason. Uh, we're going to go ahead and enable the backup servers and add one to the list. So I'm just going to say vpn2.proctor labs.com, click OK, and we'll save it. So now we should see that new entry pop up for us here uh, within our connection entries table. So what we want to do now is just connect to that guy. You can double click it or click connect. And what you should get, guys, is a username and password box that looks something like this. So from here, we want to go ahead and type in our proctorlabs.com username and password. So I'll say student1059 is my current one, and you put in our password, your proctorlabs.com proctor password, and we'll click OK. So if you see the Secure and Communications channel, you know you're kind of in business, this box should disappear. Now, we have to be VPN'd in for these route switch racks, okay? We're going to be establishing internal telnet sessions. So what you're going to want to make sure of, uh, and, and, and normally you won't have to do this uh, unless you're having some problems, but we can go to status and notifications of this box here. And for some reason, it's showing up on my other screen. Go to statistics. And if we go to route details, we'll see that we have a secured route to 10200.4. That's what we're wanting to see here, because that's where we're going to be establishing uh, Telnet and SSH sessions to nodes on that network. Now, if we go to continue to session here, the very first page is going to be our load labs page. So if we expand some of these, uh, we're going to see that we can load either the initial or final configurations for, for all of the available labs within our, our different route switch workbooks. Uh, so that's actually a, a great feature that we have available to us. I've actually already went in here and loaded one so that we can see it loaded on some of these devices. Uh, depending on which lab it is and, and what you're actually loading, it's only going to you know, load it on the applicable devices that we have. Uh, if you've used proctorlabs.com before, uh, for, for labbing, you know that these tabs have you know, different things under them. So on controls, we can clear line or we can completely revert or factory default any of the available devices that we have. And as you can see with the route switch track, there's a lot of devices that we have to go in here and manage. Uh, we also can go to the connect tab, which I'll cover in just a second. And power management, we can turn devices kind of on and off uh, at will. Again, we have remote uh, power capabilities from the proctorlabs.com webpage. Now, again, once you load whatever lab or labs you, you want to actually start working on, uh, you'll go in here and you know click you know lab one, maybe initial or maybe the final. Again, depending on what the instructions are in the workbook for that particular lab that you're working on. So I've already loaded one. So what we're going to do is go to the connect tab. And we can see that we actually have instructions on how to access these different devices. Uh, in most browsers, what you're going to be able to do, I can't do it in my version of Chrome, unfortunately, uh, but you should be able to click on this button, and what it will do is take you and open up your, your default Telnet program. Uh, a lot of the other browsers like Firefox, uh, even some of the older versions of Chrome outside of what I'm trying to do with my, my version of Chrome, uh, it will automatically pop up and maybe open PuTTY or secure CRT for you to go ahead and access. If your browser or you find that you get that screen like I had here, uh, where it just opens a different tab, it doesn't actually open your application, what we need to do to access that device is actually come in here and get our, our whatever terminal emulator you're actually using. So in my case, I'm using secure CRT. Now, what we can do is look at the instructions that they have down here for the device that we're trying to access. So this says open a telnet session to this IP address on this port. So what I'm going to do is open a, a, a new session, and I'm going to use telnet. So we're going to go to 10.200.4.118, and we're going to go to port 2001. So I'm not going to save a session for that, but I'm going to click connect. And what we should get here, hopefully, I may have turned that device off. Yeah, let's try another one. Let's try 2003 here. There we go. So uh, 
router three came up. So again, all we're going to do as we go through and open up these sessions, again, if you can't click on that, you just want to make sure that you follow the instructions here and open Telnet to whatever IP address they've dictated to whatever port number that they have allocated there for that individual device. But once you get in here, you're just going to have basically console level access to all of your devices within the proctorlabs.com topology. So from here, we can go in, we can do our show run. Uh, we can see all the configuration that's been loaded on the, the device per our instructions uh, in, in the, the loading lab tab. Again, I don't know if this was one of the devices that actually had a, a configuration loaded on it. Um, yeah, it obviously had something on it because it put a loopback IP address on there. But that's how we're going to go through and load and access the route switch devices through the ProctorLabs.com webpage. Again, we have full control, console level access to every device from a route switch perspective in your individual pod. So again, I don't know how many devices it is total. I think it's in the 20s. But there are a lot of routers, uh, a lot of switches that you can access. And you can do every lab that we have in all of our route switch version 5 workbooks with this topology. Uh, if you have any problems with it, uh, you know, by all means, contact support. We have uh, contact us up here at the top that you can go through. You can contact proctorlabs.com, and there is an individual support right here. Sorry, oh, completely overlooked it. You can click on hardware and technical support. Uh, you can search any frequently asked questions, uh, or you can actually just email support for proctorlabs.com, and those guys are quick, man. They'll get back to you in an instant and have your problem solved before you can even blink. Yeah, there'll be no wasted sessions. <laughs> so if you have any problems, uh, by all means, contact support. But beyond that, these route switch racks are some of the easiest racks that we have to access. They're easy to revert. They'll all, all, you know, everything is, uh, ends up perfect with these guys in terms of loading the labs, whether it's going to be the initial or the final configuration. So just have fun with it and get in there and lab. Thanks for watching.